stay with the results in Suzuka and Eastern Creek. In practice, things looked as if they were going well, but then disaster struck. Yes, uh, Australia and Japanese. Uh, it was for me a very good race. I win. <laughs> it is the best what I can do. And yes, it was perfect. Two very different races in Japan. Uh, very wet indeed. Some good Japanese riders also. Yeah. And Japanese are very wet and slippy. We know. Uh, Rain Gardner crash also in, in, the, in the race and very slippy and um, yes, very different race between Australia and Japan. And Australia, well, surely the best 125cc race for a long time and a, a, a photo finish. Yes, a photo finish. Uh, it was so close, I don't know wh who win and after, after I come in the, in the box and they tell me, hey, you win, but very close and it, but I win. I'm very happy. And the Aprilia is very fast. Yes, Aprilia this year very fast. Uh, the chassis is very good and the engine also. Uh, when we come back at Europe, we must do a lot of work on the bike, on the chassis. And uh, yes, I'm for sure in Europe we are, we are going uh, quicker. And Italian riders on Italian bikes, always a, a good combination. Yes, I think so. It's a good combination. <laughs> so, Waldman then with two wins under his belt, but as I said, disaster struck in the final time practice session. He crashed. Like Ralph Waldman and Michael Doohan, this character, Luca Cadalora, in the 250 class, was also looking to make it three wins in a row. So, was Luca happy with the start of the season? Very nice start, like last year, Japan and Australia. Australia was, I think, a little bit more difficult with Cardus. Tried to beat me to the end, from the beginning to the end. And uh, here now we have sure very hard race. The weather and the temperature is very hard for riders and also for the bike. Uh, I'm trying to make myself the best possible for Sunday. For the championship, I think finally Helmut will be the most dangerous, but also Cardus and the Aprilia guy. Basically at this moment, I think Keely is, is the, the one that can be most dangerous for the race. Most. Uh, also, I think during the, the season, also other riders coming to make better feeling and better fitting for them and must be more closer race. The most important thing is if the team is working good together we can we can make over the problem every time. So incredibly despite one of the toughest and best starts to the season a dramatic start in many ways we had three men heading all three classes all with double victories and looking forward to make it three wins out of three if they could. Join us again after the break to see how they went on. Sport and our look back to the highlights of the Malaysian Grand Prix. Well, the 125cc race over 29 laps and it uh, saw the Italian Alessandro Gramini in pole position on the grid. Alongside him, Sakata, the Japanese rider, Casanova and the Spaniard Carlos Gyro. Waldman, as we said, took a tumble in the second and final time practice session and he qualified in eighth place. And it was a good start for the Spaniard, Carlos Gyro, who hurtled into the lead, chased by Alessandro Glamini, but inevitably up at the front was Bruno Casanova. And it was a good start to the season for Casanova in many respects. Second to Waldman in Japan, he was third in Australia in a grandstand finish and second here in this race in Malaysia. Gramini swept into the lead after disposing of that early leader, Carlos Gyro, and then Casanova moved up into second place. Still an all Aprilia battle out in front, the first three men over the line at the end of the opening lap, all on the Italian-built motorcycles. Gramini, Casanova looking for the inside line, line and Casanova moved through to the front to show that he was definitely the man 
not to be uh, underestimated. Casanova, Glamini and Jaro then out in front in the early stages. Casanova then looking good and Ralph Malman beginning to make up ground after a sluggish start. The race was very hard. Early in the race, I thought I could have won. But in practice, I burnt my hand accidentally in the paddock. And overnight, that became infected. Really, all in all, I just wasn't fit enough. And in fact, it was very, very painful to race. And just to make life difficult, the gears started to change themselves, going from fourth to fifth. I had some problems. I thought I could win easily, but the racing isn't like that. Handicapped a little bit with the motor, but all in all I'm happy. And I'm sure that Valman's happy too, really. The 125 race then turning into a battle out in front between Casanova, Rolf Bulman, and Cremini at the end of the race was in uh, a happy frame of mind too. I thought I could fight to the end with Bruno. Three or four laps from the end I made a mistake. There were five or six riders together, uh, and then I had a little problem with the suspension on the bike. I wanted to save my tyres for the end of the race, uh, but then I made a tactical mistake. And then I was trying to catch up, but the race became complicated, uh, because in this sort of race you shouldn't actually be third or fourth when you're going into the final stages. But I tried as hard as I could, and I'm happy to have won. Ho cercato di sfruttare tutto verso tre o quattro giri dalla fine e poi ho provato e ce l'ho fatta. Sono, sono contento. And Gromini wasn't slow in showing his delight at the end of the race. Heading home, his two rivals in a, another absolutely splendid 125cc battle. Gromini getting the congratulations he thoroughly deserved. And the first time he'd won a Grand Prix was at a race and an event he certainly won't forget in a hurry. And on to the 250cc race. Well, that went out with conditions improving just a little bit and the on-bike camera being uh, on the machine of the talented 19-year-old Italian, Loris Caparossi, the uh, reigning 125cc champion. Well, the track beginning to dry out as the riders face the start of their race. Pier Francesco Killy had been the man who had set fastest time in practice. Look at Cadalora, only the second fastest time. But it uh, was two surprise characters, Massimiliani Biaggi, and behind him Alberto Puch of Spain, who rocketed into the lead as the other mortal characters decided to take things a little more cautiously. Biaggi, number 29, and uh, Pooch, uh, number 16, set the pace with Pierre Francesco Killy, the pole setter from practice, moving up into third, stop, third spot. Luca Cadalora taking things uh, cautiously, and who can blame him? And Helmut Bradl, the man who was runner up to Cadalora last year in the title chase, well, he was even further back. Conditions, as you can see, far from perfect. Well, Alberto Puch, the uh, young Spaniard, now riding for the Dutch team, run by Jan Huberts, the DC software uh, equipe, finally moved out to take the lead. Biagi under pressure from Pierre Francesco Killy. And uh, more illustrious characters still struggling. Back with Loris Caparossi, right on the rear tyre of... Uh, Ramboni, and losing another place there to Hangeli. Pooch out in front, Killy in second place, then Biagi, Cadalora, Jochen Schmidt, Carlos Cardus, and Ramboni, the Italian. 
and Pooch all the time looking in fine form out in front. On the first lap, I passed Biagi. I was going uh, fairly quietly in front of Kili and Cadalora. And at the end of the race, I tried to pass Kili and took second place. Well, it's a good result for the Ducatus team, and uh, what I want to do is to go on to Jerez and show my best capabilities there. Certainly Pooch uh, won himself quite a lot of fans with his fine performance out in front as he, number seven, Killy, and number one, Cadalora, fought out their three-way scrap at the front of the field, chased somewhat in vain by the German Jochen Schmidt and the factory Yamaha. Pooch certainly not outclassed in this star-studded uh, battle at the front of the field. Pier Francesco Kelly was happy after the race too. I'm happy with the result because I had a good starting position in pole and I didn't crash. Today's problem really was the wet track and uh, I also had, had problem with the rain because the helmet kept misting up and uh, for that reason it was difficult to pass uh, Alberto Pooch. Uh, Luca was with us of course at that time but then he just pulled away but I'm happy for Aprilia they had a good result so Kelly, Cadalora Pooch Joachim Schmidt and company had the crowd on their toes with a yet another splendid 250cc race and Aprilia once again showing the Japanese factories that they do know a thing or two about building motorcycles but nothing and no one could stop Luca Cadalora. The start was hard because most riders were on intermediates and yet the track was still very wet and then uh, out in front it was a little bit uh, dangerous battling with uh, Kili and Pooch but uh, my Michelins were better than the others towards the end of the race and I was able to pull away. Well, some fine all-action uh, footage from the on-bike camera of Loris Caparossi. He really did have uh, a splendid race and tried very hard indeed. He was mixing it with uh, some good men, Carlos Cardus, Biagi, Hengeli. Carlos Cardus, who'd been the star, along with Luca Cadalora, at Eastern Creek in Australia, just didn't have the best of days, though. As hard as he tried. He was battling with the, the young Italian, Biagi, and Loris Caparossi. And this is how the battle looked to Caparossi as he fought it out throughout the race. Cardus, Biagi, and number six, Caparossi. And remember, in round two, it was this man, Carlos Cardus, who was absolutely wheel to wheel and pressurizing. Luca Cadalora. I'm a little bit sad because I, I chose the wrong tyres. I was using intermediate tyres, trying to be conservative because I remember very well what happened in Japan when I fell off in the warm-up session. I tried to uh, make up some ground after not a particularly good start and I knew that Bradle was behind. Well, 
pero me habían cogido una distancia bastante apropiada, los de adelante. He ido remontando, luego Bradel se ha puesto detrás mío, me ha pasado y, y yo estando haciendo un interior, él por la parte de fuera se ha caído. Then Bradel crashed and I didn't see him again. I'm just going to take the rest of the season, race by race, and do the best I can in each of those races. So Helmut Bradl forced out of the race after that crash, and that uh, leaves Luca Cadalora a comfortable leader in the championship battle. Cardus too, struggling to stay on terms with Cadalora. And Joachim Schmidt making the uh, factory Yamaha go quicker this time, qualifying on the front row of the grid, but not having the best of races. <laughs> Wilco Zielenberg on the Lucky Strike Suzuki, well, he had some problems too. It was a very difficult race. The beginning was very wet and we chose intermediate and then the track was begin already starting to dry up. I took things easy early on on purpose, but then suddenly I found myself blocked in at the end of the straight and suddenly I was back in 15th place. When the track dried out, I, I felt a lot better and started to pass people. Well, I was 15th on the grid and finally seventh in the race and took some points. I didn't fall off and in the next race at Jerez I hope to do even better. Well, Zielenberg, one of the men who didn't fall off, but there are a lot of people who did. There's uh, Mr. Hengeli bringing down the poor, unsuspecting Loris Reggiani. And Reggiani who uh, has lots of luck, all of it bad, once again the innocent victim, but uh, the nice man that he is, he didn't appear to blame Hengeli for the misfortune as he hobbled off the circuit after the tumble. This is Loris Caparossi, who, uh, and this is how it seemed to him with the on-bike camera, taking the scenic route on the final corner of the circuit. Caparossi got back into the race though, well, that's uh, Corpia, one of the uh, very few Finnish riders now battling away in World Championships. Uh, he went down in quite a heap and unceremoniously uh, about to be dragged off the circuit by the enthusiastic Malaysian officials. This is Kozono, one of the Japanese riders in the 250 class, who made a big impression on the circuit, and that is uh, Massimiliano Biaggi, the very talented young Italian on the, the Telcor Aprilia, who had a great start, and was running well, and then blew it all by taking a tumble. Well, the Gilera team didn't have as good a meeting as they'd had uh, back at Eastern Creek either. Jean-Philippe Rougia said he had a good start and a good first lap but then suddenly the motor just stopped for a few seconds and then chimed in again and worked properly. That uh, dropped me back to ninth or tenth place so I kept on and then the bike kept stopping again and really it just wasn't possible to carry on.